Hi, everybody. Welcome back to day three of our lessons about Peter. Um, let's go ahead and start with prayer. Here we go. Close your eyes, bet your heads, minds and hearts on only God. Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for each and every person here with me today. God, I just ask that you would continue to bless and to cover us. Lord, that you would help us to be reconciled to you, as we're going to discuss today, that you would help us to be bold in our faith and to uh, trust in you rather than having fearful reactions. Lord, we just thank you for all the good things that you do, for all the good things that you give. Lord, you are a wonderful, caring, loving God who meets our every single need. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody says, Amen. All right, guys. Well, today we're going to start with a song. I'm just going to sing you a couple of lines to a song, um, and I'm going to put a link in the description down below to the whole song. Um, if you want to hear it, that has to do with what we are talking about today. So it goes like this. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So I encourage you to go ahead and click in the link down below and listen to the whole entire song. But today, that's what we're talking about. We're going to talk about how God can create a clean heart in us and renew our spirits. So um, today, we're going to be focusing on the word reconcile. Can everybody repeat that after me? Reconcile. Good job. So reconcile means to restore a relationship, to bring a relationship back together. Jesus reconciled his relationship with Peter after Peter denied him three times. Now, have you ever had a relationship with a friend where you were not getting along very well? Maybe you were in a big fight, but you were able to reconcile, to restore that relationship? Well, that is a wonderful thing. And I want to let you guys know, Jesus does not hold a grudge. Jesus doesn't hold back and say, no, I'm not going to forgive you because you didn't say sorry. That's not who Jesus is. Jesus is ready to forgive. He is always ready to reconcile as long as you are. Now, Peter went uh, from being very fearful and uncontrolled. He changed a lot. He started out fearful, uncontrolled, and he was empowered by the Holy Spirit and began to boldly tell others about Jesus. Now, because of his boldness, Peter ended up being persecuted along with many of the disciples, and most of the disciples actually, and uh, many people in the early church. Now, the word persecute means to treat someone in a cruel way usually because of either what they believe or the way that they look or something like that. So persecution can happen for a lot of different reasons, but Peter was persecuted because he was a bold witness for Jesus. So today we are finally getting to our picture card. So here is the picture. And our picture card story comes from Acts chapter 12. Verses 1 through 17. So here we go. Let me see if I can back up a little bit so you can see it while I'm reading it. Here we go. Peter and the other followers of Jesus continued to do many amazing things in the name of Jesus, and the church continued to grow steadily. King Herod began to persecute followers of Jesus. He had many put in prison, and some were killed. King Herod had Peter arrested and kept in prison. A Jewish festival was taking place at the time, and King Herod decided to put Peter on trial after the festival was completed. The church began praying constantly for Peter. The night before the trial, 
Peter was bound with two chains between two soldiers who stood on guard in his cell. Other guards were stationed outside the prison. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood near Peter, who had fallen asleep, and told him to get up quickly. The chains fell off of Peter. They fell off of his hands and off of his arms. The angel told Peter to put on his clothes and his sandals and to follow him. Peter thought he was seeing a vision and didn't think it was really happening. After they passed two guard stations, they came to an iron gate which opened all by itself. After going through the open gate and down one street, the angel left Peter. When Peter realized he wasn't seeing a vision, he understood that God had rescued him from Herod's evil plans. Immediately, he went to the house where many believers had gathered to pray for him. He knocked on the door and told the servant who he was. The servant was so surprised to see him, she accidentally slammed the door in his face and he had to knock again. His friends didn't believe her at first. Finally, they came and opened the door and were amazed to see Peter. That night, Peter left for another town where he would continue telling others about Jesus. Peter had changed from being a fearful follower of Christ to one who boldly told others of Jesus and did as the Lord commanded. So I'll show you a close-up of the picture again. So if you can see, there's Peter in the prison, and there's the angel, and the two guards. All right. Let's see, did you see both guards? There we go. All right, so how do you think you would have felt if you were in Peter's situation in prison? Well, a lot of us probably would have been kind of nervous or maybe even afraid. But the Holy Spirit gave Peter the power to remain calm, to be patient, which was completely opposite of his reaction on the night that Jesus was arrested. Peter had grown immensely in his faith, in Christ, and in self-control since the night of Jesus' arrest. So much so that the angel actually had to wake him up in order to tell him it was time to go. He had fallen asleep. He was so not even worried. He knew God was absolutely taking care of him that he fell asleep in the middle of prison, and the angel had to wake him up. Now, Peter thought he was having a vision. So a vision is sort of like a dream, but it's when you're awake, when your eyes are open. Why do you think Peter thought he might have been dreaming or having a vision? Well, probably because seeing an angel wasn't a normal thing to see. So he thought that, oh, I must be having a dream or a vision. If you remember in some of our other stories, most of the times when angels would visit, they would visit in dreams, like we talked about with Joseph. Now, while Peter was in prison, the church was praying for him. They were praying constantly for Peter to be released. It might have seemed to them like it was a hopeless situation, like there was no way out. But they did not give up. They were followers of Jesus, and they were dealing with some really hard stuff. Um, a lot of them had been persecuted. Some had even been killed. So they were very concerned for Jesus. So what types of things do you think that they were praying? I think that they were praying things like, Lord, please protect Peter. God, provide a way out. Lord, help us to understand what way to go. God, please provide a miracle. I bet there were all sorts of things like that and many, many more that they were praying now, when they showed up at the door, or when Peter, rather, showed up at their door, how do you think that they felt? Show me that surprised face, even though I can't see it. What type of face did they make? They probably went, and were so surprised, and were really excited, right? They were, they just couldn't even believe it. In fact, you remember what I said about the maid? She saw him, 
and was so excited she went, ah, and slammed the door in his face and then went, oh, wait, 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 wait. I think that really is Peter. And nobody could believe it. They weren't expecting God to answer their prayer right then and there, but he did. And he does. He still does today. I want to encourage you guys that to remember that God still answers prayer today. He, it's not something that he did just in Bible times. He is still answering prayer each and every day. And so I want to encourage you to continue praying to him. Continue making your requests known to God because he cares. He absolutely cares for you. Remember, we should never be surprised when God answers our prayers. And sometimes it's going to be in a really big way. So I'm going to say our week verse one more time. And then, um, you know what? We need to say our class verse together because we haven't said it together in a while. So let's start with our week verse and then we'll say our class verse. And then that will be it for today. All right, you ready? So our week verse is 2 Timothy 1, 7. Here we go. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. 2 Timothy 1, 7. Now, the other way you could say that verse is and of power and of love and of self-control. Because if you have a sound mind, you can control yourself, just like what Peter learned to do when God gave him the Holy Spirit. All right, you ready for our class verse? Ephesians 4.32. Here we go. Ephesians 4.32. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Remember both of those verses today, my friends. I love you very much, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.